Okay, the correct way to do this is to go to PNET Live and do a search for designing a PKI infrastructure and not to do what I'm doing here, which is quickly throwing in certificate services. So for the purpose of the video, so that I do have some Microsoft certificate services, I'm just going to install an enterprise root certificate services server purely to show you how to put your Microsoft CA signed certificates on your Cisco ASA. Um, now I'm also going to add in the there are two web service roles uh, make sure you get the right one and this is the one that you want Certification Authority Web Enrollment. Click next and click install. Now for the sake of the video I've sped this up quite dramatically that's us in and configuration is successful but we need further configuration so click close and go up to the little warning triangle at the top configure Active Directory Certificate Services uh, we're going to run this as the domain administrator that's fine next and I'm going to configure both role services because there's actually nothing really to configure for the um, web enrollment feature and I want to enterprise CA and it's going to be a root CA. I'm going to create a new private key. Uh, make sure the key length is set to 2048. And most importantly, make sure the hash algorithm is SHA256 and not SHA1. The common name for the CA is usually something bizarre, so I'm going to change it to something a little bit more credible. And I'm going to change the validity to 10 years from the default of 5 years. Next, accept the defaults. Next, configure. And hopefully that will plod through and go green. There we go. Configuration succeeded. Now, because we installed web enrollment, we can log in here and download the CA certificate for my newly installed CA and I'm just going to put it on the desktop of this machine I'm going to call it root CA so it's quite obvious what it is okay so you'd already have your certificate services already installed correctly with CRLs and OCSP and all that good stuff and multi-level and offline routes etc that you should have in the real world rather than just here on my test bench. So now to the meat and potatoes. If you jump across onto the um, ASA, go to Configuration Device Management, Certificate Management, CA Certificates and we're going to install that CA or that root CA certificate that we've just pumped on the desktop so that we will now trust any certificates that that CA issues and that says installed successfully now what we need to do now is get an identity certificate now, to do that we need to create a CSR if we go to identity certificates add add a new identity certificate new select enter a new key pair name and you can put anything in here you want. Now importantly, make sure the size is set to 2048. It's usually by default it says 1024. Click generate now. And now click select. And here's where we enter all the attributes for our certificate. So the common name is uh, what the URL is going to be that you used to access the outside of the ASA. Now even though I've put ASA in uppercase there, they're actually not case sensitive, as you'll find out in a minute. So that's the common name. To be honest that's the only really important bit that you need. If you so wish you can put country code in, departments, etc. etc. It's our state to sunny Teesside. 
I think that'll do us. Okay. I'll click advanced and you'll see the FQDN there is, is set to the host name of the ASA. Uh, we need to change that again to exactly the same as, as we set the common name. Click OK and click add certificate and what this does is it generates a certificate signing request or CSR. I'm just going to call this certificate request.txt and I'm going to save that onto my desktop. Click OK. And that's my CSR saved successfully. And you can see that that request is now pending. So there's my certificate sign in request. Now, if you open it up, yeah, it'll look like gobbledygook. Just put word wrap on so you can see basically what's what's in there. It doesn't make much sense to a human being, but we're going to need to copy and paste that text, and that is what we're going to use to request our certificate from our certificate services server. So take a copy of that and dive back onto our web enrollment. And now we need to go back to the front page of that. So we want to request a certificate. We want an advanced certificate request and then the bottom option and then paste in the text that we've just copied change the certificate template to web server. If that's not there, do a Google on my site. I've got an article on that been missing. Click submit. And then we're going to download our identity certificate. Again, I'm going to save this on my desktop and I'm going to give it a sensible name so we know what it is. And if I open that up, we can see that by default, it's going to last for two years. Now, if you wanted a longer one, you just have to modify the um, the web server template and certificate services. But now, if we click install, we can browse to the certificate we've just popped on the desktop. Click install. Click install. Certificates import succeeded. There we go. And you can see. It's now actually changed, it no longer says pending. And we can have a look at its properties. Oh, very good. But the important bit is the bit that we typed in. And there's all the settings on my identity certificate. Now that just exists within the asset, it's not actually in use yet. The final thing is you need to go to advanced SSL settings, select the outside interface, and click edit. And then we're going to set this certificate to be the certificate that is presented on that interface. Uh, I'm not using any load balancing and roll certificates, so I just need to put the primary one on. Click apply and finally make sure that you save the changes to the firewall. And that's just pretty much done. Let's just have a quick tidy up. We don't need them on there anymore. So now if I connect to the outside of my ASC here, so I've jumped onto a machine that's outside the network that can resolve that DNS name, you'll see I don't get any certificate errors. And if I look at the properties of the certificate, you can see it's the one that I have issued from test C here. And that's us done. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.peatnetlife.com. Thank you.